Hello, St. Peter's. Welcome to a sunny, sunny, glorious day. Finally, we get to come outside. It's not too cold. It's not too rainy. It's just perfect for having some library time outside. I can't wait to show you what we have in store today. Even happy to be outside, we have our friends, Ralph and Magic Monkey, by our nice flowers back here. Here's Joy with her jar of joy. Everyone is here and ready for story time. Are you ready? All right, let's get ready for library. Let's turn up our ears so we're ready to listen. Let's turn off our mouths so we don't make a sound. Put your hands quietly in your lap. Take a nice big deep breath. Now we're ready for our story. So today is one of my favorites and maybe I gave it away with the shirt I have on. That's the book we're reading. I have Harold and the Purple Crayon. It is one of my favorites. You're gonna be amazed to see what Harold can do with this little crayon. And look how little this book is. But you know what? Every time I've seen this book, it's always just a small book. Maybe so you can carry it around with you. Our author is Crockett Johnson. That's a cool name, isn't it? Crockett Johnson. All right, let's see what Harold is up to. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight and he needed something to walk on. It was a good thing he had his crayon because he drew himself a moon. And what is he drawing to walk on? That's right, the sidewalk. Look at that. He, met, he made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost. And he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path. So he left the path for a shortcut across a field and the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. Hmm. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. Hmm. It's not really a forest, but he has a good imagination. So there was no tree there. He took his purple crayon and he started to draw a tree. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. Whoa. It was a terribly frightening dragon. Look at those teeth. He sure is doing a good job with his purple crayon. Oh, it even frightened Harold. So he backed away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Uh oh, now he's making a wavy line. Suddenly he realized what was happening. But by then Harold was over his head in an ocean. Oh no, he made water that he fell into. Oh, he came up thinking fast. And in no time, he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. Whew. Good thing Harold is smart. He quickly set sail. And the moon sailed along with him. That's pretty neat. Here he goes. After he sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble because all he had to do was draw it. 
he stepped ashore on the beach wondering where he was. Hmm, let's see where his imagination takes him now. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics and the thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. Look at that, he drew a blanket, he drew a little plate. I wonder what he's gonna eat. Oh, there was nothing but pie. But there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. Wow, that's a lot of pies. I do love pie too. What's your favorite kind of pie? Apple, mm. raspberry, that's my favorite. Blueberry, ugh, any kind is good for me. It's a lot of pie for one person. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. Oh, look what he's starting to draw. So, <laughs> Harold left a very hungry moose and is deserving porcupine to finish it up. Those are cute little animals he drew. I like them. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see. So he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If it went high enough, he thought he could see the window of his bedroom. That's a clever idea. He was tired and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of his mountain. Whoa, he's higher than the moon now. He really did make that a tall mountain. Uh-oh, but as he looked down over the other side, he slipped and there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. Oh no. But luckily he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and he grabbed onto it. He kept his wits. That means he didn't panic too much. He stopped to think while he was falling and he thought, aha, a balloon would save me. He's so smart. And he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. Maybe he went up too high. Huh. So he made a house with windows and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window. Hmm. He tried to think of where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. Whoa. Do you think you could make that? I think you could. That would be a fun project. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think of where it might be. He decided to ask a policeman. That's a good idea. You always look for the helpers, right? The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway. But Harold thanked him. <laughs> he drew that funny little policeman. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in his bed, then suddenly, Harold remembered. What did he remember? He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. 
it was always right around the moon. Hmm. And then Harold made his bed. He got in and he drew up the covers. <laughs> Look at that, he drew up the covers. I like it. The purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. What a fun adventure. Harold created his own adventures by just using one purple crayon. And when he started to get into trouble, he used his brain and thought of a way out of it, all with his crayon, right? How would you like to do some drawing today? I would like to as well. We're outside. I don't have my crayons and my markers and my colored pencils with me. I don't have any paper today. What could we draw on outside? Do you have any ideas? What are you drawing when you go outside? The driveway, right? The sidewalk. You get out your sidewalk chalk and you can draw all kinds of cool pictures. That's what we're going to do today. But what if you don't have sidewalk chalk? I only have one piece of chalk. And as we saw in Harold and the Purple Crayon, that would be good enough. I could draw all kinds of pictures with my one piece of chalk. But what if I wanted to add some color? Guess what? I found some things around my yard that will draw on my driveway. Do you want to see them? All right, come on. We have to go over here, down to my driveway, where I can show you what I found. It's going to be amazing. All right, here we are. As you can see, lined up. Sorry, my towel blew away. Let's get y'all lined up there. Down here I have my one piece of chalk. It happens to be green. This, it looks like an orange rock, but it's actually a piece of brick. Yep, I found a little chunk of brick because I have some bricks that go kind of in a path around my house, but a couple of them got broken. So this is a brick. It also, there also could be things like a piece of a clay pot maybe. they would probably be the same color if you have a broken pot. I also have this rock that's kind of glittery. It's hard for you to see on the camera, but it sparkles in the sun. And then I found this white rock, just a plain white rock. So we're gonna see what kind of lines they can make if they would be good enough to make a picture. You ready? Let's try it. We'll start with our chalk. We kind of know what that looks like, right? So here we go. Zoop. Yep, it's nice and easy. It's soft. You can just hardly put any pressure down. Makes a good green line. What do you want to try next? How about our piece of brick? Let's see, because if you don't have chalk, you might have a piece of brick around your house if you really look around the ground. Let's try it. Look at that. It's so orange. Isn't that cool? All right, let's try the sparkly rock. Ooh, it's so glistening in the sunshine. I love it. Here we go. Look at that. That's kind of a whitish gray color. Can you see it? Wow, that really goes nicely with my orange and my green. And then I have this white rock. I predict it's going to be white because the rock is so white. Let's see. It sure is. That one is white, a little whiter than the sparkly rock. Do you see that? So now, even if I don't have chalk, I can make all kinds of pictures because I have some other colors. That makes me smile. Isn't that neat? So why don't you see if you can look around your yard and see if you can find some things, experiment, try them out. I tried a couple things that didn't work. Uh, let's see, do you know what I tried? I tried a peach pit, because we have a peach tree in our yard and the squirrels like to eat them and then they leave the pits. It didn't work. I tried a peach, piece of mulch and it kind of worked a little bit, but it was like kind of shadowy. And then I tried a stick. That only works if there's dirt on it because then you're just making dirt marks but see what you can find. Now, remember, you're not gonna break anything. 
You're not pulling things apart. You're just finding things that are on the ground. It's really easy to find rocks. Try a lot of different rocks because some will write better than others. See what you can come up with. If you do have chalk and you want to draw some amazing chalk pictures on the ground, that's great as well. Whatever you decide to do, I would love to see them. So you could send me a picture in the comments. You can mess message me. You could send me an email. I'd love to see what you're up to. Any way you choose to spend this day, I hope you do it outside. And I hope you have some fun with your family. Are you ready to spread some joy? Me too. Come on, Joy. Let's see what we've got today. Shaking up a jar of joy. We're gonna spread some joy. I'm getting better with this lid. I'm learning my lesson to mix them up really well so we don't pick the same one again. All right, let's see. This one says, thank your parents. Ah, that's always a great one because they do so many things for us. Whoever is taking care of you, thank them, right? Give them a big hug. Thank them for the dinner they're making you. Thank them for all the help they're giving you. Thank them. They're, they'll make them so happy. And after you thank them, maybe see if they want to come and do some experiments in the driveway with your chalk and your rocks as well. I think that's a great way to spread some joy. All right, boys and girls, go on out there. Have a great time. Show me what you do with your chalk rock drawing experiments. Oh, I hear a siren. That's what happens when you film outside. It's okay. We're going to hope everybody's okay for that siren. All right, so go and spread some joy. Thank your parents. I will see you again on Friday. Keep spreading your joy.